is as Jurgen Klopp shouting at a pitch invader uh, as he oh. was being uh, walled off. Uh, so much then uh, to talk about this game. Uh, you take a look at this, the largest win in rivalry history between Manchester United and Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool have outscored United 18 to 1 in their last eight meetings at Anfield. Manchester United conceded seven goals in the Premier League for the first time in their club history. It really is. Lots of digests. We welcome Jan Argafjortov to the show. Jan, you'll forgive me if I'll start with Stevie. <laughs> yeah, I do. Where the heck did that come from? <laughs> I, I, I've, I've no idea. I mean, can you? What were the odds for seven? A lot. A lot. Mean, can you imagine if somebody had said that it was going to be? Six? You just wouldn't have believed them. No. Would you? But it came from the middle of the park. Is where it came from. Right. Where you've been struggling so much this season. Absolutely. For the first time in a long time, Fabinho Henderson, and that's probably Elliot's best game in a Liverpool jersey, actually played like the Klopp side that was running over teams. Now, we shouldn't forget that, although I disagree with Ten Hag that United were the better side in the first half, he's correct saying that they had better chances. Yes. But they weren't the better side. You know, Liverpool played all the football from the first minute to the last minute, and, you know, they took advantage of the chances that, that came along. Uh, and, of course, they had a clean sheet, albeit just about, We Alisson tried to throw one in again. That's why he gets a seven on your Yeah, that's why he gets a seven. But, no, Liverpool deserved the victory. Seven, seven nil's crazy. Yeah. Um, but I, can Liverpool keep that going in the middle of the park? That's the question. If I'm, right. if I'm Jurgen Klopp, I'm forgetting about the scoreline. I'm looking at the performance, and it all comes from the middle of the park. Can we do that between now and the end of the season? And if they can do what they did in the middle of the park between now and the end of the season, then they will be in the top four positions. What was the scene in the Nickel household as all this was taking place? I was angry. You were angry at 7 0? Yeah. Well, why? <laughs> <laughs> I was angry all the way through. Every time, one, every time one went in, I was angry. Why were you angry? Just us. Mm? Just was. <laughs> but, 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 but that's supposed to make you happy, you know? Yeah. No, but it's like. <clears throat> it's weird. It's, it's like. You know when you're ramming somebody into the ground? No, I don't. I just want to keep doing it. <laughs> just want to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was well, unexpected, doesn't even... Well, it is unexpected, place. but what I will tell you is there has been a little indicator of a downing of performance from United. The Cup final, great, did not play well. Mm. West Ham in the FA Cup, 3-1 in the end, but that was a late goal, did not play well. And so, I never saw 7-0 coming. I thought it would have been a close game and United could dig some out. But they've, they've just... Standards have been dropping a little bit up into this game. Now, I think what we have here is a, a classic case of Liverpool. Just, it all happened for them. Everything worked in the, the day. But I think quite a few of these players have been reading the headlines. Really? Yeah. I think quite a few... Who in particular today, from a United perspective, would you be disappointed with? Oh, every, every one of them, to be honest with you. Right. But, quite frankly, that was a pub performance in the second half. Absolute shambles and embarrassment. Three or four nil, maybe five, as I sent to you, is a bad day at the office. Yeah. Seven nil in any game, never mind your rivals, is a total shambles. And to capitulate in the manner in which they did, and they were half-hearted in the end... Didn't look as if they were that bothered. I mean, some of the attempts at challenges and clearances were just awful. And what we saw was Liverpool, the midfield and the front three, really clicking the movement. And Ten Hag talked about it. The first goal really told the story of where this game was going. Diego Dallo got sucked in and followed Andy Robertson in the middle of the field. And that left Fred. Now, we should have done a better job, Fred, with his experience. But Dallo should have been passing Robertson on. Right. Uh, to Fred and said, I'm going to hold my position. He didn't. That let Gakpo down the inside. The goal was brilliant. I thought Liverpool just, it just felt like, it felt just like it was back. Right, yeah. And for United, it felt like it was back, but in a bad way, sure. in a real bad way. Surely, Jan, this is worthy of an unbelievable, isn't it? I think I've ever been a more proper guest and could say my unbelievable because <laughs> I, I think, I, I, Dan, I love my football history and I, I'm thinking back of 
when two big teams like Manchester United and Liverpool meeting each other, uh, that amazing result. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Germany trashing Brazil at the World Cup 7-1, mm. uh, all the way back to 54 when Hungary beat Germany, the, the late World Cup winner 8-3. But I think when we saw the game today, first of all, I love it when the right players score goals. This was a kick off a Gakpo. It was Nunez with two goals. I love this heading. The 5-0 goal was, was special. Salah beating beating the, the record there. And then Firmino, after telling that he's going to leave Anfield, uh, getting that goal. But I, I mean, get, I guess this is why we all love our football. In, in, in two weeks' time now, first uh, Liverpool losing 5-2 to Real Madrid. Then Manchester United beat uh, uh, Barcelona. Barcelona beat Real Madrid. I know Liverpool beat Manchester United 7-0. And to the point of, of Manchester United, yes, they were, they were okay in the first half. They were maybe the better team. But, I mean, sometimes we just have to dig out the cliches. You're not worthy using that Manchester United shirt because this is so embarrassing. It just shows you that you can build up a reputation. You can build up a so, solid background. You can build up a Ten Hag who has got the right attitude into them. And then you can break it all down in 45 minutes. And that is done unbelievable. Yeah, most definitely. You take a look at that United performance, particularly in the second half. Is that just a blip? Is that, as Craig says, on believing the headlines? I can't make my mind up because that's the third time this season that they've been completely annihilated. Right, first time for like a long... There's quite a gap, right. isn't it, between the City and the Brentford games, and obviously... Yeah, I, I, yes. I think, I think for the first time in a long time, we have to look at Ten Hag. Right. What did he do wrong? Well... More importantly, when it when it, when the game was over, when the you know for some the game was over at three, but it, it, it wasn't because it can still come back. But at four, he has to do something. He has to move everybody in tight, and no more goals go in. Seven nil is a complete and utter embarrassment. As Craig said, it's schoolboy stuff. Mm. It's it's the way they finish the game smacks of packing in. And if I'm a Man United fan, that's the worst thing I can do. I can, I can swallow getting beaten and having supposedly one of those days. But if everybody keeps going to the end, I can, I can, I can get over it. I think the worry would be that they packed in. And actually, Ten Hag, in my opinion, didn't help them. Because what he should have done, and somebody on the field, and that's why your captain's there. Bruno Fernandes did nothing yeah. when, when somebody pulled the plug. You know, get in tight. We don't lose any more goals. I don't care if they knock it around the back for the next 20 minutes and don't score another goal, right. but it doesn't go to six and seven. I think Ten Hag is culpable for that. Now, the other one he's culpable for is why Marcus Rashford didn't start on the left-hand side. And that's not why they lost the game. But at the same time, are you kidding? Trent Alexander-Arnold, when yeah, he what's stood the on thinking, the field... What's the thinking I have from... no idea. I don't know. Trent Alexander must have stood on the field... And when the referee was going to blow the whistle, see Bruno Fernandes standing there and go, thank you very much. Right. <coughs> that, that, that's not why they lost. But those are two, two, to me, major things that stick out from this game from United. He's done that recently a couple of times, hasn't he? He did it in the second half against West Ham. He did it against Barcelona, Veghorst a little deeper, Rashford through the middle. But as Stevie said, guess what? If you're watching Liverpool defend, where's the, where's the weakest point? But I think, you know, Ten Hag's obviously got plenty of money in the bank here. Uh, plenty from the, from the job he's done. I don't know how much he'll look at himself, but I certainly know he'll look at his players. Right. For sure. I mean, he's already shown that, that he'll dress them down. Maybe even publicly. I don't know. We saw after the Arsenal game, away, he was really harsh on them. And that was, for, that was in a close game. Mm. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles uh, this defeat. I've no doubt they'll pick themselves back up and go again. And I, I, he talked about not tracking back, didn't he? Unprofessional. You kind of look at someone like Anthony. Yeah. Can you playing in these sort of games? Where when you I talk about reading the headlines, I, 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 I think he'll he'll drain that out of them. Mm. And, but it's a wake up call. Look, Mo Salah hasn't had his best season. He's not been alone for Liverpool, right? He hasn't had his best season. But he's a proper player. Come on, you, you, know, you know, even his not the best is still pretty good sometimes. But as a wide man. He, he runs it. Yes, he frustrates, but he runs at people. He scores goals as end product. He does something different. I'm not having Anthony. Right. I'm just not having him. But is that something? Is he only? Is he, is he, is he? He's got. Is he still got time to grow? No. Is it a case? Well, listen. I'm not saying he hasn't got skill, but I. Yeah. I, I don't know many hundred million dollar whatever it is wide men that can't beat a defender. Right. One on one. 
all he wants to do is come back inside. All he wants to do is take the mickey out of Dan Burnley on the touchline in the final. And fight, I, and fight with and, everybody. And, 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 you know, I'm sorry at the moment. I think, I'm just, I am not, and I'm not blaming Anthony for this, by the way. Sure. I'm just saying, having watched him recently, and I include the cup final, I am not having him as a 100 million think, pound player. Go on, Jan. I think, I think, and I think Dan is a particular thing to 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 see. With Liverpool been struggling for, for a long period, I mean, for the whole season more or less. How many times have you seen? players having a terrible body language on the pitch. I think that body language is very, very underestimated how you, you make a moral, how you make a culture at a club. And if you saw Manchester United today, and, and I, I'm an admirer of Bruno Fernandes. I like Bruno Fernandes. He's done the stuff. But you can't do that as a cl club captain, by the way. And when you're down, you see, yes, the middle of the park of Liverpool been terrible. Have you seen Jordan Henderson or Fabinho, even at their worst, like uh, taking out their hands, telling their teammates this and that, been plugging in there, been bad, has to be said. They have been one of the reasons why Liverpool haven't been so good this season. But, but sometimes when you see Manchester United, and I think that Ten Hag knows about that, that he needs, you can't have those kind of players in there. You ha or, or at least you have to get that out of your team. Because what happening, I mean, we've all, I, I've been playing for some uh, bad teams sometimes, so we, I've lost uh, highly. Uh, but, but still, then, then you see what stuff and what the, what the culture really is worth. Because that body language of Manchester United from 3-4-0 today, that was, that was conference league level. Why, um, is it taking this long for Liverpool to do this? Because they have, they've got nothing out in the middle of the park for, for, for the majority of the season. So why did it click today in particular? Well, he, whether, whether Klopp's changed the training or what he's done to get some energy in the legs. Because at the end of the day, with the amount of work that you saw them doing today, you need, you need to have your legs about you. And clearly, for most of this season, they haven't had the legs. Right. So Klopp has done something, and I would, I would suggest that's what it is. He's reduced the training, not as much strong, and save it for the games, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and obviously, it's Man United at Anfield. So you, you put those things together, and, and you, you outwork the opposition. You know, at the end of the day, every game's the same. You have to earn the right by working hard at the start of the game to play your football. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.